What's up, guys? Alex from Pumped Antics. Uh, we're going to be discussing the WNBA and its drug testing policies and PED usage within the WNBA. Now, very recently, many people have seen, and what gave me this video idea was a video of Brittany Griner saying she wanted to be called Pops. Um, I have no issue with that. She's a masculine lesbian. She wants to take on the more masculine role. But um, some people have pointed out that her voice is very deep. This is upset. Please tell me how exciting that is for you and what you're looking forward to most. I'm super excited. Um, well, I mean, I guess I'll just drop it. He's here. Um, so he's here. Yes. 7, 8, 24. Um, if you'll notice in the clip, her voice is quite deep. But I think that... Well, first, let's go back and look at some of the older clips. Next year, I have a clip from the 2013 NBA draft, WNBA draft. I lost for words. It was like when I met Tony Hawk just a minute ago. I couldn't say anything. I just lost for words right now. It's exciting, but you've... you. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, seven pounds, eight ounces. Yeah, that's my man. I love that. Yeah. So I also have one um, right after she won her first WNBA championship. Every night like it's, our last, like it's our last game. Now, you didn't get to play tonight because of your eye injury, so you had to watch your... Uh, I just saw my team out there fighting hard. Uh, just everybody helping everybody, and, and, you know, it was just a hard-fought game, and we deserve this. We deserve it. So, I have one more uh, from 2019. Hey, here we are, Brittany Griner. <laughs> again, and I talked to one of the refs, and she checks in. Hey, we got history from the first game. Watch us both. You know, I, I'm totally honest with the refs all the time. I'm like, hey, watch us both. I'm not so, before I get into the whole PED usage in the WNDA, um, I think personally, Brittany Griner, um, it, the, her voice change is probably not due to you know anabolics usage um it might be to some degree but i think that most of it is probably down to her being a masculine lesbian and that's the role she wants to take on and so she tries to play the bar her part the best her voice was already pretty deep to begin with um but obviously you can't be sure but i guess let me get into the meat and potatoes of the video, what I had in mind. So looking back at the WNBA, um, right here in 2003, the league was created in 1996, but in 2003, uh, Rhonda Mapp was basically the only person who's ever been suspended from the WNBA over a drug policy violation that I could find, and I'll go over Diana Taurasi in a second. But um, basically, this woman, I've never heard of her really, um, and the WNBA chose to not really list out what policy she had violated or when this drug testing had been undertaken. All it said is she was tested positive for controlled substance and she was banned for two years. Um, it may have been performance enhancing drugs, but this LA Times article lists that if a player tests positive for amphetamine, cocaine, LSD, opiates, or PCP, the player will be dismissed from the league. So that seems more likely the case. Next up, we have Diana Taurasi, basically a legendary WNBA player, uh, 42 years old at this time, still playing in the WNBA, the only WNBA player to score a total of 10,000 points. Um, that's a big deal. That's a lot of points. But she's still in the league. So basically what a lot of these WNBA players do is they play overseas um, in the off time when the league is not playing games to make more money or you know have fun playing basketball, whatever they do. But basically, uh, Diana Taurasi was over in Turkey playing basketball for the Turkish Basketball League. A Turkish WADA accredited lab at the time tested her, um, you know, standard drug test, I assume. And she was popped for modafinil, which if you're familiar with modafinil, it's a cognitive enhancer. It is a narcolepsy drug. Some people use it in place of something like Adderall for its nootropic effects of making you you know, smarter in ways, right? More focused, and it, it could be something that you would use in a performance-enhancing context in basketball, either to make you more alert, you know, maybe have finer motor control, something like that. Um, it's actually the drug that the movie Limitless was based off of. But essentially what happens is they say that the Turkish lab was faulty. Her lawyer says the Turkish lab was, they were not up to standard, and 
they were quick to note that the substance modafinil is not a performance enhancing drug when really it is right but basically what ends up happening is nothing happens they get the a sample um, they do the b sample you know she tests for modafinil in both of those samples to my understanding and then the turkish authorities wada they just drop it and nothing ever comes of it right now i skipped over this but um the most up-to-date information I could find on the WNBA's drug testing policy is from this LA Times article from 2003, so it might not be entirely accurate, but at the time, <laughs> the drug testing policy is pretty pretty wild, to be honest, bro. So their drug testing policy goes like this. A veteran player can be tested once during training camp. If a player reports during the season or within f fewer than 15 days remaining in training camp, she can be tested once during the first 15 days after reporting. So essentially, you are signed on to, I don't know, the fucking Phoenix Mercury, I think is the team, right? Um, you can be drug tested in the first 15 days after you report for practice, right? So it would be um, incredibly easy to avoid this sort of detection. And it would be extremely advantageous to avoid this type of detection it really at the beginning of the season your body's going to be fresh you're going to be ready to go and if you're doing uh, performance dancing drugs in the off season boot it up and toot it up and you're going to be fine for 15 days um and then after that you can continue taking your peds to make sure that you're ready to keep going for the remainder of the season so you might be wondering what kind of drugs would a wnba player want to take potentially there's probably the potential for taking traditional anabolics or SARMs perhaps to minimize virilization and if you don't know virilization is like the effects basically what it would do to someone who's gender transitioning it would turn you from more female to more male it, it adds masculinizing qualities um, deepens your voice you grow body hair and your jaw changes a bit and yeah, you know what I'm saying. But the type of drugs that you would typically take, um, besides anabolics, would be something like peptides, uh, BPC-157, TB, um, drugs like that in order to aid in your injury recovery, something like your growth hormone secretagogue, even like MK-677, or um, one of those other ones, one of those other peptide growth hormone secretagogues, there's a couple of them. But other than that, you would take you know regular growth hormone, um, Maybe you would even take some insulin, I doubt it, but you might take some insulin, you might take some growth hormone, peptides, basically stuff like that to keep your body in check, um, make sure you're recovering properly from game to game, and keeping your body you know, as free from injuries as you can, injury prevention, injury rehab, all sorts of stuff like that. So right here, I'm going to play a clip of Victor Conti, who worked with a bunch of Olympic athletes to give them performance enhancing drugs, um, specifically the substance called the Clear, which is like an anabolic steroid that was fairly weak, but it was undetectable because it was a designer drug. And in this clip, he's going to talk about how officials desire not to you know, have positive results at certain periods of time. It's because they, my opinion, they generally don't desire to catch these athletes because it's bad for business. I had met an Olympic official who had told me about some positive drug test cover-ups that he knew about that occurred at the 1988 Olympics. And... At the 1992 trials, U.S. track and field trials in New Orleans, I was working with a shot putter named Greg Trafalis, and he was taking steroids, including Dianabol. So he got fourth, he didn't make the team, and but he'd been on the previous 1988 Olympic team, and I went with him to Seoul, Korea, but a few days after the competition, I got a call from this Olympic official, and he said, your boy has tested positive. A few days after that, I get a second call from this Olympic official, and he says, tell your boy that he's off the hook. I said, what do you mean he's off the hook? And he said, well, the elder statesmen got together and decided that this was just not a good time for these positive drug tests to come out. Apparently, there were five positive drug tests, including a high jumper, and, and my shot putter, Greg, was one of them. And he said, they've just decided it's not a good time, and they're going to sweep them under the rug. So, yeah, as you can see here, um, judging by the essentially zero performance enhancing drugs that have ever been caught in the WNBA, um, here, we can Google it for you. As you can see here, there is um, essentially nothing about this at all besides Marion Jones. That was actually um, one of the person people that Victor Conti worked with. 
But yeah, basically there's nothing. There, there is no information on WNBA players who have been suspended for poor sensing drugs, who have you know come clean about taking PEDs or anything like that. Um, and I think it's a little suspicious, but I think probably the WNBA, uh, one, they don't have very rigorous drug testing at all. Like the, it's made to be circumvented, essentially, in my opinion. But um, they definitely don't want people to be popped for PEDs because they don't want the sport of women's basketball to be looked down upon. They want to grow the sport and I have no issue with that. And you know, if you're watching the Olympics right now, most people in the games are fucking they're juiced to the gills. They're juiced to the gills. Um they're they're taking EPO, all sorts of shit like that. And they're performing at the highest level. But people like seeing that and I have no issue with that. Now, what I do have an issue with is that they didn't take Caitlin Clark to the uh, Olympic Games because Caitlin Clark is a beast and they should have put her in. But yeah, I guess it comes back to, uh, do I think Brittany Griner is natty or not? Um, <laughs> my opinion is probably not, but not in the way that you think. She's probably not blasting trend. Um, she's probably not on some crazy dose of test. Maybe what I would say a hypothetical cycle of a WNBA player would be in the off season, they would take something like, you know, growth hormone, some peptides to attenuate their bodies to be more resilient to injuries. And during the season, they do the same thing. And if they get injured, they would probably take something like growth hormone to speed that process up, um, some different peptides, and maybe they would throw in some sort of anabolic, some sort of SARM or something like that, that would have low masculinizing effects. But um, yeah, let me know what you think. Do you think that uh, Brittany Griner is on the gear, or what do you think, boys? Let me know. Thank you. Please like and subscribe for more. Hit that bell icon and shit like that. You know, comment down below for the algorithm. Uh, thank you, boys. See you in the next one.